Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. And today I have a very special episode for you. On May 27th, I had my first full day online network and learn summit. Now for the half of March and all of April, I had been doing bi-weekly networking events where uh, for a couple of hours each of those days where I brought in experts to help my entrepreneurial authority tribe be able to build their business and transition uh, during this COVID-19 time. Everyone uses the word pivot and I'm not sure how much how I feel about that word, but I, I did know that people needed new ways of getting out there and doing what they were already doing, but doing it in a new way that gathered attention. And so I brought in experts, but I decided that I was going to do, instead of two every week, I was going to do a bi-monthly full day event. And I am so excited about these events. And our last one on May 27th was incredible. I had myself and five other awesome expert speakers and you um, people learned communication skills they learned networking skills they learned marketing skills they learned sales skills like there was just so much that happened in that day and great new connections were made people found new clients and referral partners and one of the best things that happened was they got personalized help and support so you could talk with other entrepreneurs and other experts and ask questions and everybody would share ideas that really helped you to take your business forward. And so today I want to share with you on the podcast one of the amazing trainings that took place. And so this is going, you're going to be listening to Crystal Duku's training on how to use LinkedIn to attract your target market. And I have to admit, we were networking before Crystal's uh, time came up and I was so into the networking that I did not look at my clock. So we actually ended up starting Crystal's episode about a minute or so late. So you will hear that on the podcast as well. So I hope that you enjoyed today's training on how to use LinkedIn to attract your target market. Hello everyone. I got so into the conversation at the table that I lost track of time. So we are one minute late here for Crystal. So we will give her an extra minute there. So Crystal, if you want to come on, put your camera and your microphone on. Hi. This is what happens. Everybody's getting such Hello. great conversations. And I'm, I'm like, oh my God, I gotta go. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I, I can't believe we're coming on already. It's going so <laughs> well. <laughs> awesome. So Crystal today is going to be sharing about how to use LinkedIn to attract your target market. And so Crystal Duco's passion is helping others reach their goals. Since she was a little girl, her dream was always to be in the field where she can be of service to others. And as the years went by, it's safe to say that she's living that passion every day. With over 13 years experience in the higher education industry, Crystal derives joy from helping students enroll in their degree program of choice and helping them to achieve their educational goals by guiding them through the college application process. In addition to working with students, Crystal also, on top of all this, maintains a social media marketing business. And I can tell you, she's my social media marketer. So highly recommend her. She started her own company, uh, Imagineer Mentors, four and a half years ago as a way to help entrepreneurs and small business owners build and maintain an online presence while sharing their business and their passion with their targeted audience. So Thank you so much for coming today and sharing with us. And I am so looking forward to hearing what you have to say. And I will hop back on when you're done. Thanks, Kim. Okay, hi, everyone. You know, this has been such a great session so far. I mean, I'm learning so much. I'm taking so much notes. I can't wait to look 
back at the replay. So thank you to everyone who has been sharing um, and all the networking so far. It's, it's just such a great day. So today, um, as Kim mentioned, you know, I am a social media manager. I love working with busy entrepreneurs and really helping them find what their message is is and getting it on their social media platforms of choice and it's it's fun because you know it does take a lot of time to just get there on social media and keep it updated so i love it because i get to help others meet their goals that's the part i enjoy most about it the posting and putting stuff in is great but just getting that information and getting it out there and learning how to get that that um growth is what really makes me enjoy doing this. So today I'm going to talk to you about LinkedIn. Um, and I love LinkedIn. It's my favorite platform. Don't tell the other platforms I said that, but I think they know. Um, so I'm just going to go through, I'm going to pull a PowerPoint a presentation up, um, share the screen with you guys. You guys will have access to it afterwards and just go through, introduce you to what LinkedIn is about and basically look at how you can really grow your presence, grow your visibility, grow your brand and attract the clients that you're looking for on there. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen now. Um, just let me know if you guys can in the chat box, if you can see this, I'm going to have to go back and forth. If you can. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go back and forth because I haven't figured out how to really use this yes, but I'm going to pull it up. So what's going to happen? I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to go through the slides and then at the end of it, I'm going to answer any questions you guys may have. Um, and so you can just write it in the chat box and feel free to blow up the screen if you want to see it bigger. Okay. All right. So basically the first things first linkedin is a great way for you to develop your personal branding and one of the core things that you have to get right before you really start utilizing linkedin is getting your personal branding which is your profile up and running you want a profile that is attractive to people that when they come to it they can they can see who you are they they can get a sense of your personality about your business and so forth and you want to make sure that that is what you know they're taking away from it so i always highlight that you want to make sure that you have a very strong profile photo a lot of you guys that i just reached out to to request have great profile pictures. I can sense your personalities. It's warm. It's inviting. So that is very important. Also for the cover photo, which is at the top, it's a great space for you to start utilizing to put what it is you're about. It represents who you are. It's a great space to put what your business is about. So before people scroll down to the rest of your profile, they have a clear idea of who you are already okay and i you can put your logo you can put some your phrasing your key heading something that will propel them to dig deeper into your profile now as we go down then there's the headline a lot of individuals think that the headline should read what their current position are whether it's ceo whether it is you know um an owner of something no, your headline should really have what your professional intentions are, what you like to do. So for instance, um, you know, for instance, like, and I'm going to pick on Carol a little bit here, but Carol is, a, you know, she's a business leadership coach. She helps women, um, female, she raises up lioness leaders. And if you look at her headline, it's very clear on what her professional intentions are and who she's helping and what she's passionate about. Okay. Now, what is in a profile? Just to give you, so you want to also fill up your profile as you go down. The, and I'm going to run through this quickly. Um, and I'll tell you a little surprise that I have at the end. I'm going to run through this quickly. So that way you can um, have an idea of what goes into it. The about section is a great space 
for you, your viewers to get to know who you are. You can get a little bit of vulnerable. You can share your story, how you've derived, how you've come upon your business. What are your motivations? What are you passionate about? And really showcase who you are. If you have a great quote that stands out, it's a great place to add that there. So as people go in, they get, they get a better sense of who you are. Then you list your awards, your recognitions, your certifications. Many of you guys have great um, certifications and awards. I recommend you start putting those things on there. If you have a media link, any type of media link, you wanna highlight those things on there, right? So people, as they're digging through your profile, they're seeing, wow, so this person won this award. Oh, wow, they were highlighted in this magazine. Oh, they've done this interview. You know, many of you guys have been in Kim's um, podcast, so that is also a great opportunity to highlight your podcast links on there as well, because it allows people now, as they do research on you, to click on it and get to know who you are. So by the time they make that connection, connection, or you make that connection with them, they're already they're already aware of your personality, of your mindset, of what your visions are, what your, um, you know, the way that you approach life and you approach business. And then of course the experience section you you it's important that each experience tells a story it does not it, it should not read like a resume per se you want to show how you've moved from one one position into the next tell a story with it say you know okay i finished this position and this is what led me to move into this i was looking for a different challenge i wanted um i wanted to you know, for instance, when I had finished, um, like in in social in higher education, as I moved up the ranks, as I put the part with my business, I spoke about how much I wanted to continue helping people, and I wanted to combine my passion, and it led me to starting my own business. So as people read it, they can say, "Wow!" So this person has they've crushed the goals that they've set or they've crushed the positions that they've been in and I can see that they're always moving forward. Okay. So this is the, the good part, how to increase your LinkedIn presence. So LinkedIn loves you when you love it. Right. And what I mean by that is that you have to spend time on it. Kim said earlier about consistency in social media and all, all platforms are the same where consistency is very important but with linkedin especially it's they really want i'm sorry guys i didn't get my computer okay yes so they want to see that you're on here and so the first goal to start getting recognition and growing your visibility on linkedin is by engaging the way the algorithm works is that if you just post it's not really going to pick up. It's not going to push your your profile forward. It's very intuitive. So it wants people that love giving back to the LinkedIn community and they love people that engage with others. So the first rule of thumb is as you're building your LinkedIn presence, instead of just diving in and posting and just telling people about me, 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 what you do is engage with others on the platform. And what that means is that you can search tab, you can go through your news feed. And when you see people have posts and comments and different postings that really speak to you, you want to take some time and leave a comment and not just leave a comment like, hey, really good, but you want to leave something of value. What was your takeaway from this post that you read? what what did it leave in you and what piece of information of value that you can give to the person that's also reading the comments right because people do read the comments on these posts so again you want to engage and you want to add value my recommendation is always look for the your target market your target audience who your audience is and you can do like a hashtag search and you know, if you guys have questions and stuff and you wanna do like, like just, you know, ask me some more questions later on about how you do the specifics, I'm more than happy to share that with you afterwards. But you search for the, for the, your audience and the industry that you're in 
and then you see all the posts that come up in there and you start engaging on those particular posts so that way your name starts to get known and they can see that you're adding value right now after you've started engaging every day with your audience what you started what you want to do now is start creating posts and content that is that is going to add value to your audience so you if it's in your industry you're not doing a hard sell right people want to see wow so they're what what am i getting from this person how knowledgeable are they how are they adding value to my life so depending on the industry that you're in you want to create posts that really speak to people that they're going to talk they're going to walk away from and one of the things you i always like one of my coaches said always ask yourself how is this providing value to the person that reads it think about how your content is showing up to your audience is it just you going on about yourself or is it is it engaging the other person are they going to are they taking away something think about it like dating or you know you're dating or when you were dating and so forth right if you're sitting down there and talking if your date was sitting down there only talking about themselves you're going to be like oh my gosh shoot me now but no you but when you when your date starts to engage you and ask you questions about yourself and also and also give you valuable information you find yourself drawn to that person it's the same way with your linkedin presence right you want to you want to create and you share original content that is relevant to them and that they can take away from like for instance carol and her empowering questions that is such good information and then you just share that snippet and that that leaves your audience asking wow i want to know more about this let me follow carol let me see what carol is up to and then from there you know you um they you you get a follower you get someone who's following your work and then there comes a time that they're they're going to want to to need to use you or as they start engaging in your post that's a, a hot lead that is all already interested in your business now one of the things that i always encourage to is that you connect with everyone and develop relationships now there are some profiles that yeah are shady there is no picture there's just one location from wherever in the world that have nothing on it you don't have to accept them but if it's someone who's not necessarily in your industry but they have a good profile they, they may not necessarily be in your industry but they're connecting with you connect with them you never know where they're going to lead you linkedin is first and foremost a networking site so the same way that you will network and connect with different people across all boards whether they're your target market or not it's the same for linkedin okay and you let your personality shine forth um it's good to listen to other people and and look at how other people are doing things but if your personality does not match with how their video matches find a way to make your personality shine forth in your um in your profile okay so how to use linkedin for your small business so we went through the personal profile and how you have to set it up one of the things that are very key and it's becoming very very popular on LinkedIn right now is business pages. It was not huge before, but as of recent, and this is hot new news um, for everyone here, is that having a pro a company paid setup. So if you do not already have that, it's very important to have your company paid setup. So you can so it's not your personal page, but it represents your company on there, just like how you would have a Facebook page. But LinkedIn is making a big push right now to grow company pages. So it's good. It's a good time to get in and get that developed. And you you as you go again to make those new connections. So going back to the point of when you're engaging with people, and you're engaging on posts and you're engaging you want to reach out to people and that you would think 
would be a good fit for you and connect with them. Send them a connection. Send them a connection request. You know, invite them to connect with you. Don't don't be shy about it. It is about growing your network. So if you think, wow, I would love to have this person as a client one day, or this might be a good fit for me, or this might be my ideal client, um, you know, you want to firstly start connecting with them and adding them to your network and you engage with them and i'll share a little bit more on how to do individual engagement as you go about but the way that you engage with them is that you start as you you go on their post and you comment on the articles that they are sharing you give back to them so you're building that rapport and you're building that relationship and most importantly you want to share relevant content. You want to publish content. So not just stuff like where, hey, um, you know, this is what I'm doing. I have this going on. Please join me. You want to share content where people can learn from. So think about developing a few different pieces of information that, you know, it's you're not giving away your key, your key insights or things that people would normally pay for, but whether so for instance i also do um, coaching for international students so I, I would sometimes share content about the market in the international in the higher education industry or things that are relevant to international students and give my give my two cents on it or share information about the college application process and as a result they can t they take that information so when i offer my one-on-one -on -one coaching people come to me once i put it out there they don't even say hey um they're not like oh i don't know her i don't trust her. there's that trust already established they know that they're getting good information from me so they come to me from it but again it goes back to consistently publishing and sharing this information now messaging how many of us here love the cold call the cold messages that we get hey guys i love um i have this amazing product that i i think you would be a great fit for never heard from this person in your life they've never interacted with you at all um there was no type of welcome message or anything all you know that they're on your profile and they send you this message that um that says hey I have this product I think you'll be great for. It's not It's not nice. It puts up a defense um, mechanism to other individuals. If Unless they're specifically praying for that answer right now, it's not going to really yield anything. But how, what you wanna do, again, on LinkedIn is develop. It's time consuming, but it's worth it because you're developing that relationship. So if you do have a message that if you see this person and you want to make that connection, you want to you want to be specific in the subject line about what you're reaching out for. Give people a heads up. It lets them know, you know, hey, OK, so this is what I can expect in this email. And you keep it short and sweet and to the point, And you always look at their profile, read their profiles. One of the things that I always do when I get a message from someone that wants me to use their product, I look to see if they've checked out my email. Um, my profile. And if they haven't, I'm like, this is just a generic email that's coming out to me. Once someone reached out to me and was so excited, she was like, I think you're you're great at what you're doing. And I love all the work that you do. And you know what, I would love to be a social media manager. And I'm like, um, that was the first thing in my profile. <laughs> if you read it, you know, if she had reached out and be like, Hey, we're in the same industry. I love, I love the industry too. I'd love to connect with you and see how we can partner up. That'd be completely different. But it showed me that she, this was just a generic email that she was sending out to everyone. And it really turned me off from even working with her, you know? And so when you message people, you message people based on their profile and then you share the reason why you're messaging them. Get to the point. Everyone is super busy. Get to the point and be like, you know what? I'm reaching out to you because I love the work that you do. I see that you are involved in these things and I would love to I would love to help you see how I can help you. You know, and you it's so it's so hard to be specific, but in a general sense like that. And then you end with a call to action, whether it is to 
um, don't leave it open ended, like hoping to hear back from you soon, or you know, please know whether it is to send me a message or can, um, what time are you available so we can set up a call or what is your feedback on this? You always end with a call to action. One of the things that I also enjoy is little voice notes, especially after that initial period, you send a little voice note, especially if it's all leads or a warm lead that you want to reconnect with, just pop in a quick voice note, say hi, it makes it personal. They can hear the warmth in your voice. And most importantly, let your personality shine forward. And really, um, I just went through the information, but I want to come back on, I think hopefully I probably have like five more minutes. Um, so if you got any questions, but I just wanted to offer this here for those who are part of today's attendees. You know, um, I do profile and company page reviews and everything for a lot of clients, even just one off. So for anyone that is interested, um, this, this offer does not expire. You're getting, I can do both for you for $75. All you need to do is connect with me on LinkedIn and send me a message for this offer. Just connect and then send me like, Hey, Crystal, we were on, we were on the, um, online network and learn summit. I would love to take you up on that offer. Okay. So I'm coming out of present mode now. Okay. Yes. Okay. And so that's, that's basically it. Um, I would love to answer the questions, you know, hello, Crystal. Yes. There were a few hello. questions. Hi. Yes. I'm going through them now. So Mike asked how much time okay. do you uh, invest per day in LinkedIn? I it's so I chop up my time on LinkedIn, but I would say if you can dedicate an hour a day to interacting with um, posts, interacting with other people, responding to other people, that'll work so long as you do it every day. Awesome. Now, d does that ha hour have to be all at once or can you break it into chunks? You can break it up into chunks. So you can just you can post in the morning. You can comment on your lunch break. You can go in and out. It just, I just always say an hour or you know what? You set a goal of 10 accounts a day that I'm interacting with. However, I get it done. So a question I have for you, Crystal, is how important is it to have that 500 plus connections showing on your profile? So what is most important, the connections are people that you're actually connected with, right? But then the most important part is growing the followers because there are people that may not connect with you, but are following you. Um, it is the average CEO has about 900 connections on LinkedIn, but it's a matter of, I think as you, especially as you're building your brand it's the same as creating followers on Facebook or Instagram and stuff like that. You want to create the, grow the following account and people will naturally connect with you. You can only connect with 30,000 people maximum, and you can only ever send out 3000 connection requests in your lifetime ah. on LinkedIn. So you, so the goal is to get people to connect with you and send you the, the, the connection request. So as you start, as, as people start engaging and interacting and stuff, you'll see the interaction, the connection request coming in. That is a really good point. I did not know that crystal. And it also means that, um, you know, if you've only got 3000 over your lifetime, then you really want to make sure that if you're sending connection requests, it's with people that you really want to connect with. Yes, exactly. You want to, you want to save those with the ones that you want to connect with, but everybody else, once, once everything is start up and going, people will start sending you their connection requests. Awesome. And then one day it will come out that you max it out at thirty thousand um, dollars. Thirty thousand. I, I, the person that I like, who teaches me a lot about LinkedIn. He's my LinkedIn coach. Actually, he grew, he grew his profile from thirty, you know, from about five thousand followers to one hundred and sixty thousand followers in about five months. 
five that months. is massive that is massive yeah i'll try to get one of the gas one day kid <laughs> he's he's good like we're, we're good so but he's 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 phenomenal and but um and the and he did it all organically and as a result he grew his business to a to a to a place where it's actually surpassed his actual income from his wow job. that's amazing Okay, Samantha had a question way back more towards the beginning. She said, when you say original content, do you mean only things that we create or can it be other people's articles that we post with? We just don't want to be doing the Facebook share. Yes, so it should be the stuff that you create because you're establishing yourself as the, the expert or the person that has all this information. If you're sharing other people's content, they may go to someone else. Now, if you come across a really good article, what I would suggest is always take a snapshot of the picture, post it, post your takeaway from that article, and then post the link to the original article in your comments. LinkedIn does not push links on the comments, like on the, on the actual post. The algorithm likes to push original content. So if you want later on, you can always go add it back, but I always say add it in the comments and tell people link to the original article is in the comments, but this is my takeaway from what I got from this. Cool. Carol Boston asked, what days, times are best to post? Anytime. Um, I would stay away from like Sundays really because people don't tend to be on it. Um, people don't tend to be on it, but LinkedIn is like, sometimes I would post 11 o'clock in the night and there's actions. There are people that respond to it in the morning because the people that are on it are on it at all different times, especially now. I mean, maybe not the 5 a.m. and stuff like that, but any, any time I would say after 8 a.m. to late in the night, it's perfectly fine to post. Okay. Kelly asks, can we find out how many requests we have sent? I used to be a recruiter and this was our only source. I think if you, if you had the recruiting profile, it might have given you different, um, it would have given you a lot more leeway to do those requests. But if you go into, uh, let me, I would have to go into the page, but I think if you go into it, you can see all the requests that you've sent. Um, if you go into your settings, they will show you like message um, requests received, requests sent, and you'll be able to track how much you've sent. So we got time for one more question. Avni, uh, well, how about you connect with Crystal at your table? Um, you can ask your other questions. So Mike asks, love organic traffic and growth. However, when would you recommend using LinkedIn ads? And that'll be our last question for you. So I am actually doing a training for myself on Sunday to learn about ads through the company pages, which is actually going to yield a lot more than running ads. Um, it wasn't as big before. So you know what, I would, I don't have too much information on that right now because I want to get all the information from that training. And I'd be happy if you have an email, share it with you afterwards when to run it. But the big push right now with LinkedIn is getting your company page up. So that's the training specifically, company page and running ads through there. Awesome. Thanks so much, Crystal. You did an amazing job. We want to have a few minutes of networking, but I want to remind everybody, make sure that you go on LinkedIn and Facebook, use the hashtag online network learn and either take a snapshot of the screen or just share something that you've learned today with that hashtag. And I will be sending you the free power words book. Um, so I will try to connect with you on social media, but if you want to make sure you get the book, then email me as well at info at rtipublishinghouse.com. So thank you so much, Crystal. You have done amazing. Thank Guys, you. take advantage of that offer, $75 for a LinkedIn um, profile review and, you know, kind of rewrite an assessment. That's an amazing price. People spend hundreds, sometimes even thousands of dollars for that. And Crystal's going to give it to you 
for an amazing price so that you start to see some results on your LinkedIn. So make sure you guys take advantage of that. And uh, we will go back to networking and then we will have our last session at 2.45 today and then networking afterwards. So we'll see you back at the tables. Wasn't that an amazing training by Crystal? I know that I learned so much through listening to her and the direct actions that you need to take to be noticed on LinkedIn. It was an amazing session. Now, if you enjoyed today's training, that's just a sample of what you're going to get when you come to the Online Network and Learn Summits. And our next one is on July, Wednesday, July 29th from 9 to 5 p.m. I am also working on getting a very special speaker and maybe doing a whole open event in the evening. But for right now, I do have the next event and it is going to be good. And so if you want to find out all the details of the event, who the speakers are, and purchase your tickets, which are only $19.97, uh, $19.97 uh, plus tax. Uh, you can get them at onlinenetworklearn.com. So I think the tickets come out to about uh, $22 um, with the tax included in the price. So $22 gets you a full day event, life-changing, business-changing event for you. So make sure you go to onlinenetworklearn.com and get your ticket for our July 29th event. So this has been Crystal Duku and Kim Thompson Pinder on the Author to Authority podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you on the very next episode. Bye now.